National Home Brewing Day, May 1st, 2021. We're here at the, the worldwide headquarters of Wally King Masonry here in West Milwaukee. Very auspicious place to brew a beer because we are literally in the shadow of one of the biggest malting companies in the world, Malt Europe. It was Brainerd Malt, Malt Europe bought it in 2008. Uh, today we're brewing a Belgian double, one of the four Trappist styles of beer. It's kind of a dark, uh, sweeter beer. We're shooting for about 7.5% alcohol. Right now we're going through the first process which is called mashing. It doesn't have anything to do with physical activity. What it does is we're going to soak the grain in warm water that changes the starch into fermentable sugars. That's what the yeast is going to eat. And that's what, uh, yeah, that's what's going to make beer. So right now we're heating up the water. We have our grain milled. Uh, all we have to do is wait. Then we're going to mash it. That's our next step. So I'm taking the temperature of our strike water, what we're going to soak our grain in. We want to get to about 166, I believe it is. And right now it's about 85 degrees. So you got a little ways to go. This is one of those things that takes a lot of time. It, like I said, there's times where you're standing around, followed by a few minutes of frantic action, followed by more standing around, followed by more frantic action. So right now, we're going to stand around. That's our malted barley. It's actually delicious. See, good and good for you. So before you, can use, before you can use the grain, you have to do something called milling. It's like grinding coffee, but you don't grind it, you just crush it so that you can get to the inside of the barley. Here's our grain mill. It's like a little coffee grinder. So right now we're heating up the water. We have our grain milled. Uh, all we have to do is wait. And then we're going to mash it. That's our next step. So different beers require different what's called mash temperatures. Uh, for example, this beer we're going to make a little thinner in body, a little higher in alcohol. So we're actually going to mash this at a lower temperature. That converts more of the sugars, or starches into sugars. Uh, something like a Bach beer or something a little sweeter, you would mash at a higher temperature. That leaves sugars in the in the wort that the yeast won't eat. So it leaves it with more body and more uh, residual sweetness. So we're going to mash this with any amount of luck at about 150 degrees, 149, 150 degrees. We have to heat the water hotter because once we pour it into the cooler and add the grain, that'll absorb heat so the temperature will drop to where we want it. So this is what looks like a picnic cooler because it is a picnic cooler. This is called a mash tun, T-U-N. That means container. What we're going to do is pour the grain and that hot water in here and hold it at about 150 to 253 degrees for a little over an hour. What that does is, is converts the starch into sugar and then uh, the sugar dissolves into the liquid, turns into a liquid called wort, which we'll look at a little later. It's really sweet and delicious. This is called a false bottom. Uh, the liquid is going to drain through here and filter out most of the grain, and then we'll put it in our brew pot. Uh, there's a little valve here, so we'll set this in, and we're all set. As soon as the water's heated up, we can mash it.
mash ton cover goes on here. The mashing process takes about an hour and 15 minutes. That converts the starches into sugar. What happens then, the sugar dissolves in the liquid, becomes something called wort. It's a sweet, very delicious liquid. We're gonna drain that out, filter the grain out. We're gonna drain it into our brew pot. Then we're gonna boil that for about an hour, maybe a little longer. As we boil it, we'll add hops at different times for bitterness and for flavor. Also, we have something that's unique to Belgian beers called invert sugar. Usually don't use sugar in beer, but we have invert sugar we're going to put in. After uh, we get done boiling, we'll chill it down, put it in our big sanitized carboy, our big six and a half gallon jug, add the yeast, and we're done. We're gonna put a piece of aluminum foil over our grain to help spread this water out so it doesn't go right through one particular area. Now you don't want to get this water too warm. If it's too warm, above 175 degrees, it might start rinsing things out of the grain that make the beer taste astringent. So you want it to be right about 170. And there's our timer. So after we're done with our mashing, that is soaking the grain in warm water, we're going to drain off the liquid that's left. That's called wort. When you drain the wort out of the mash tun, there's going to be a few grain husks left in it. It won't filter it all out. And if it's in the beer, it might make it astringent and off flavor. So we'll put this hop bag on the end, and that's going to filter out any grain that's left over when we drain it into our fruit pot down here. going to do something called sparging, which is actually rinsing the grain. We want to get as much sugar out of there as possible. So as we start draining that wort out of our picnic cooler, our mash tun, we're going to pour this warm water over the top. Uh, it's going to soak slowly through the grain and rinse out all those sugars as much as possible. Uh, we're going to heat up some water, three gallons to about 170 degrees, and slowly pour it over the grain as we collect the wort. So hops are one of the important ingredients in beer. Uh, they add flavor, they add bitterness, and they add aroma. Those are the big three things. The longer you boil the hops, the more bitterness you extract. So we're going to boil these at about 60 minutes. We're going to boil them for an hour. That'll extract a certain amount of bitterness. Hops normally look like a little pine cone, about the size of your thumb. But these are pelletized. It's a lot easier to handle, a lot easier to deal with. We're going to add one ounce and three quarters at the beginning of the, or at 60 minutes of the boil, and that's going to help bitter the beer. Later, we're gonna make another addition of hops, and it's gonna add hop flavor. Different hops have different flavors. Some taste like tropical fruits, some taste like pine, some taste like uh, apples, some, all different kinds of flavors. So we're using traditional hops for Belgian beer today, Styrian Goldings and Czech Saz. Okay, Belgian beers use sugar. Normally you don't use sugars in beer, unless you're making a cheap beer like Steel Reserve. But Belgian beers use sugar because it thins out the body and it raises the alcohol content a little bit. But yeast doesn't like regular sugar, like that white sugar you put on your cornflakes. It'll work with that, but it takes away from its important job of making alcohol. What I've done is taken regular sugar, added water, boiled it, and added a little acid, a little lemon juice. What that does is something called inversion. It breaks the sucrose molecule into glucose and fructose, which is what the yeast is going to eat, for all you science people out in the audience. This is something called a hydrometer. It looks like a thermometer. We're going to fill this tube up with liquid, that wort that we're making right now. We're going to put the uh, hydrometer in. It's going to float. There's a little gauge in here. It tells you how dense the liquid is. Basically, what we're determining is how much sugar is in there. We'll take a reading, then oh, write it down somewhere. We'll add the yeast, let it ferment for about two weeks. Then we'll take another reading. We'll fill this up again with fresh liquid. There'll be a difference. There'll be a lot less sugar in here. So the liquid will be less dense. That way, if we do a little math, we can tell how much alcohol is in the beer. So we're gonna put this, this is called pre-boil gravity. It's just a measurement I take for this kind of myself. So the scale says 1.044. That means it's 1.044 times denser than water. 
but we just want to take a temperature reading here and see. So we're right at 173. Hydrometers are only actually accurate at 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Since this liquid is about 170, 173, it's going to be a lot less dense than it is when it cools off. So I'm going to go do some math and figure out what the, it's called a temperature correction, and figure out what the real specific gravity would be if it was 66 degrees. I got to look it up on my phone. <laughs> you got to type numbers into a conversion thing and it thinks for you. So we get to the website which says hydrometer temperature correction calculator. The hydrometer reading we're going to put in is 1.044. Uh, temperature now is 173. Okay, so the adjusted value is actually going to be 1.060. What was the original? 1.044. So when it cools down, it would be a lot denser. Hot liquids are less dense because there's more activity. So what's it's actually, which is pretty high, we're going to get a lot of alcohol. Out of this. foam suddenly disappears. That's called hot break. That's when the proteins in the beer coagulate and drop out of suspension. In the meantime, we've got to watch this because it'll really foam up. That's so good. I think we'll kill the oil for a second. You haven't added the hops yet. Not yet. No. Yeah, the foam all of a sudden just collapsed. So, but you have to keep an eye on things. You can see it's starting to collapse on that side. If you don't watch it, it will boil over. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It won't come up anymore. So. Good. So in about 10 minutes, we'll put in our first top edition. So, it's been 15 minutes, we have one hour left to boil, we're going to do the first top edition. We're going to put in our hops. All we do is... That's it, that's our first top edition. We'll do another one in 45 minutes when we add our sugar as well. One pound. So just like people, yeast needs nutrients too. Normally there's enough nutrients in the beer, uh, but this has especially something called free amino nitrogen, FAN. It needs nitrogen so it can grow, just like grass needs nitrogen. So this is gonna give uh, the yeast just a little extra. So we should be pretty much set, seven and a half grams. This is something called whirl flock. It's actually a seaweed derivative. What this is going to do is it's going to clump the proteins in the beer together to help keep the beer clear, otherwise it might be hazy. So these are going to cause everything to coagulate, fall out of suspension to the bottom of the brew pot, and it'll help clarify the beer. So we're going to add that along with our yeast nutrient. Actually, this goes in at five minutes before we're done. So our wort is boiling now. At, uh, in about a half an hour, we'll be done boiling it. That'll be an hour and 15 minutes. But you want to cool it down as quickly as possible for a couple of reasons. 
First of all, that stuff is an excellent growth medium for bacteria. That's why yeast is works so well with beer because yeast eats all that sugar. So the quicker you cool it down, the less chance of an infection. Second of all, if you cool it very quickly, again, there's other proteins in the beer that will co coagulate and fall out of suspension and give you a clearer beer. Uh, there's any number of ways to do it. You can put it in a tub of water with ice. Uh, you can use something called a plate chiller, which is like a radiator. Cold water goes in one side, the hot work goes in the other and chills it. I use something called a, it's just a coil of copper tubing. You run cold water through the copper tubing, uh, it absorbs heat from the wort and cools it down. We want to get it to about 75 or 70, 70 degrees would be perfect. From boiling down. From boiling down to that, right. Then we'll, then we can pitch these. Yeah. Here we go. And that's that. That looks good, all right. Sugar's all dissolved. Gonna let that boil another 15 minutes. So, five minutes to go in the boil, we're gonna add our nutrients, and we're gonna add that clarifier, the wool swap, just like this. Thank you, my friend. So in five minutes, we're going to cool things off. Okay, now we're going to crank on the water. Our work was boiling 212 degrees. We want to bring it down to about 70 or 75 degrees before we put in the, or before we put in the yeast. Uh, if we put it in while it's too hot, it'll kill the yeast. Yeast is very sensitive stuff. So we're going to cool it down. We're going to move it into a, our carboy, that big glass jug. And then we're going to pitch the yeast. And the yeast is going to go through its growth phases and make beer. It's going to be about two weeks for the first fermentation. That is, the yeast is going to eat all the sugar it can. It's going to use up all its nutrients, all its oxygen. Then it's going to go dormant. That takes 10 days to two weeks. What you do then is siphon it to a second container called secondary. What that does, there's still a little bit of yeast activity. It eats any off flavors. Things settle out of solution so it gets nice and clear. That takes about two weeks. Then, you bottle it. You put it in a bottling bucket, add about three ounces of sugar. That provides a little extra food for the yeast to create carbon dioxide in the bottle and make the beer fizzy. The beer is chilled. We're gonna put it up on the table and, and put it in the carboy. Then we're gonna add the yeast. So this is the last step. So we take our pre-sanitized carboy uh, we need a funnel and a spring. There we go. All right. So that beige sludge on the bottom, 306 billion yeast cells. There, and that's it. The yeast is pitched. So it should be filled with a little luck. If we can get it up to about here, we're doing okay. I'm actually 
actually going to go home and aerate it again. It needs oxygen. When we boil it, we boil all the oxygen. Okay. So you need to, yeast needs oxygen to survive, just like everything else. Yep. So I have an aquarium pump with a stone at the end of this hollow tube. So I put it in there and I bubble it for about five or 10 minutes. That saturates it with oxygen. So there's four, three phases of yeast growth. First is lag phase, nothing happens. They get used to its environment. It starts absorbing nutrients and oxygen and everything. Second phase is log phase, where it reproduces exponentially. That's when it makes the alcohol, that's when it does its work. Uh, then the fourth phase is, is, goes dormant. For the third phase, it just goes dormant. It flocculates, clumps together, falls out of solution, goes to sleep. As it gets close to the bottom, more hop sludge is coming out, so we have to shut the valve off. Right? <laughs> and I think we're done here. Okay.